it's time to see if I can achieve my colors on your images. The other day I asked you guys on Instagram to send me all of your raw and unedited photos. I got a ton of images from you guys, a lot of which are really, really amazing. And the reason why I'm doing this is because a lot of you guys are interested in how I achieve the colors that I do on my Instagram. I wish I could give you an A plus B equals C formula to do that, but I fell in love with photography because of the editing aspect and I approach editing my photos as a painter would a blank canvas, creating something different every Every time. Now, I will say this, I do know that I have a specific color palette and aesthetic, and I'm hoping that this video will at least point you in the right direction. Ultimately though, I want you to walk away from this video and say, you know what, I'm gonna try and create my own aesthetic and my own colors with some of the tips that Brian gave me, but don't just copy me and try and create what I create. If I was just mimicking someone else all day, like, I might as well be a robot, and <laughs> there's no, almost no creativity to that. Let's jump right into Lightroom and we're gonna take a look at this very first photo here sent in by at Pixel IoT. And this is a pretty sick photo. I think I've seen this location before. I wanna say it's an airport somewhere in Asia. I'm not exactly sure, but definitely a cool location. Now, one of the very first things when I go to edit any photo is I'm gonna just take a quick look and see what preset looks the best. Now, if you don't currently use Lightroom presets in your workflow, I would definitely recommend getting some. I personally I personally have some presets now. I actually don't sell any presets, but if you want five of my presets for free, all you have to do is start a free trial with Mood Sound Design. And you'll get five of those presets and uh, you're already gonna be one step closer to getting the colors, the look, the feel of my photos. So like I said, the first thing that I do when I go to edit a photo is I'm gonna see what preset I like the best. Let's take a look here. What's amazing about Lightroom is just by hovering over any preset, it's already gonna show you what it does. I really like this sunset clouds preset actually. A huge part of my editing workflow as well is constantly looking at the original to make sure that what I'm doing in terms of editing isn't just completely making the image look like hot garbage. <laughs> so if you hit the backslash button on your keyboard, you can easily toggle back and forth from the before to what you currently have working as an edit. And once I add a preset of mine, the very next thing I'm gonna do is adjust the exposure to make sure I like the overall brightness or darkness of it. So with this photo, I actually am pretty happy with where the exposure's at already. I might adjust some of these shadows, maybe I'll deepen them. So this whole area in terms of brightness is really at a good place. So one of the next things I'm gonna do after adjusting these main settings here, I'll then go and add some gradient filters or adjustment brushes. I've already made a video on this and if you just click right up here, you can take a quick look at that video to see how I use those gradient filters and adjustment brushes. And I definitely meant to say graduated filter, but sometimes I suck. For this image, I feel like I really like the blueness in the sky here as well as some of the warmth in this foreground. So I'm gonna add a gradient filter that comes down to right here. And I wanna kind of enhance some of that blue a little bit. And when I add these, you know, I'm just gonna tweak with sliders and just see what I like, what I don't like. And this is just kind of that creative freedom that I don't really have a science for. A lot of my editing comes down to me like literally messing with sliders until I get something that I like. <laughs> it's all very visual based. So like, how do I bottle that and give that to you? It's kind of hard. So again, we've got this gradient filter here. I've already cooled it down a little bit. Maybe we're gonna just uh, darken this here and bring some of the detail up here. Um, we can bring the shadows down a little bit. What I wanna do with this image is actually bring a opposing gradient filter to the bottom here and warm it up. So you can see just by warming it up, all those light rays are getting a lot more orangey warm. And I really like how these colors are opposing this, the cool tones as well as the warm tones here. We're already getting quite some good contrast. Some colors are really starting to come through for me. I actually wanna go back to this gradient filter. Maybe we can bump some of the saturation, maybe just a little bit. Then I'm actually gonna add another gradient filter that's just gonna hit the foreground here. And I really wanna get this foreground nice and moody. So we're gonna bring down some of the exposure, some of the shadows, maybe bump some of the highlights. 
a little clarity. Yeah, there we go. So I really want to highlight this area where it's shadowed in and make it a lot more moody, a little bit more dark. Now keep in mind, if I was posting this image on Instagram, one of the things I'm gonna do fairly quickly in my workflow is find that four by five crop and see what looks best. So this one already looks pretty good where it's at when you just put on the four by five. I'm also gonna quickly hit one by one. I typically toggle back and forth between the four by five and the one by one to see what it looks like as that full crop posted on Instagram and then what it would look like as just a square. I'm actually gonna go back to this gradient filter and bump these highlights a little bit. Might even take a brush here, just paint in some of this area, some of this area. I really wanna separate this guy in the foreground with some of this light here and really make that pop. When you look at it, you can really see a little bit of distinction here from the silhouetted guy too in that background there. Now, take a look at the difference that we already have here, and I really like the way this image is coming along. It's really moody, the colors are all there. So from here, I'm gonna just work my way down and see if there's any adjustments I need to make with the texture, clarity, the tone curve, all that stuff. So I usually like to add a little bit of clarity to my photos. Another big thing is, is really working with the vibrance and the saturation. A lot of times I like to really bump the vibrance here and then pull back the saturation a little bit. I think I'm pretty happy with that there. Again, there's no rules to this. Mess with sliders, tweak with stuff endlessly until you're happy with it. Let's take a look at this tone curve. Might wanna deepen some of these shadows here, just right in this area. This bottom control point's really going to determine how much of that fade look that you have on your image. If you're going for that more vintage faded look, you can really bump that up quite a bit. Or if you want your shadows and blacks to be a lot more clean looking, you can take that control point and move it down. I kinda like a little bit of the fade on this, maybe like right there. And that's looking really good so far. So I don't feel like I need to do a whole lot in terms of adjusting this. This is now the time where I usually take a look at hue, saturation, and luminance sliders. Again, there's no right or wrong answer with moving any of these. And the more you mess with these, the more you learn what they do and how they affect your photos, the better you're gonna be at really using them to your advantage in achieving the colors and the look you're going for. One of the first things I do is really take my yellows and make them a little bit more on the orange side of things. Let's take a look and see where, what this green is doing. A lot of times I'll bounce to the luminance and see where that color really is on the image. As I slide this green luminance up and down, you can see it's mostly in this area here. I think I wanna slide this over and really just have it hit more on the yellow side. I just don't really feel like the green color works with the current color palette we have. A big part of what I like to focus on with colors is being a bit more minimal. I like to have nice contrasting colors or more of a monochrome, maybe focused on just one color. So I might even take this green and desaturated a bit. Let's take a look at these aquas here. I like where they're at in the middle. These blues. I don't want to get those blues too aqua. I feel like maybe we can desaturate it a bit. Not too much. I'm gonna mess with the luminance here. Ooh, that's where we can really get those blues pretty deep. So that luminance can really make the sky a lot deeper, gives it that little extra bit of mood here. Next thing is if we want to add even more color to this image, you can add color to shadows, midtones, and highlights. That's with the current update of Lightroom, which I would definitely recommend getting Adobe Creative Cloud so you can constantly have the latest version of Lightroom. I usually don't add a ton of color to the midtones in both the shadows and the highlights on this image. This Sunset Clouds preset is adding warmth to both. And I might actually want to intensify some of those warm shadows just by adding a little bit more saturation there. The other thing that's nice is you can decide how much of a balance you want between color added to the highlights and the shadows. We'll just keep it in the middle for now. I like that. And we're sharpening this image just a little bit. The only other thing here that I'm gonna take a look at is this grain amount. I personally like a little bit of grain just because it just gives it that little vintage feel to it. Also helps to hide some of the imperfections or if you have banding when you've got a clean gradient across an image, if you add a little noise or grain, you can hide quite a bit of that. Another thing I forgot to mention, I'm almost always going to adjust the white balance. That's usually after I apply the preset. Now these presets don't affect the white balance of the images. It's just gonna keep whatever white balance you shot the image at. I think this white balance where it's at is fantastic. Great work. Pixel IoT, love the image. The next photo we're gonna take a look at was sent in by at Alex A. Streeter. This is just a nice silhouette image. 
You've got a bird flying here. You've got the moon. It's actually pretty impressive. I used to love doing silhouettes. I don't do as much silhouette stuff anymore. I actually have a preset that I've created to achieve my classic silhouette colors. We're gonna start with this silhouette preset. Right away, you already get some magic happening. Check this out really quick. I'm actually gonna send you all 15 of my current Lightroom presets that I've been using, including the ones I'm currently using to edit all these photos. Here's all you have to do. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, take a screenshot that you've subscribed, and then DM me that screenshot on my Instagram, at BrianAdamC. I'll respond to your DM with a link to all 15 of my current Lightroom presets. It's that easy. Here's the only thing. You have until October 31st first of this year to do it. October 31st, 2021 is the last day I'll respond to any DMs. So might as well subscribe, DM me that screenshot and get those presets. So the very next thing I'm going to do is take a look at the white balance and let's go ahead and warm it up just a little bit here. I think I like around 6,000. And then we're going to take a look at the exposure. Maybe we can darken it to about, just about there. Again, I'm constantly hitting the backslash button just to make sure that I'm not just doing any crazy adjustments. Pretty early on in my editing process, I'm almost always editing for the purpose of Instagram. So I'm gonna crop it as a four by five. I think I like that right there. The next thing I might do if I was gonna also add stars to this photo is add a gradient filter right here on the top. Drag it down to about there. Just deep in that sky. I might also take another gradient filter, drag it up from the bottom. Maybe we can warm it up a little bit more. I already love the vibrance. I already love there's a little clarity going on with it. We do have a fairly decent fade here with the tone curve. So if I wanted those blacks to feel a little bit more deep, I might bring that control point down a bit. Probably like it right about there. What's amazing about this preset is it's doing a lot of this hue slider work for me. If we take a look here at the color grading where you can add additional color to your photo, it's adding a lot of color to the highlights and shadows, that nice kind of reddish orange to this whole area here. And then in the shadows, we've got actually a little bit of green here. I might see if we can make that a little, well, no, I like the green. It's That's where we can get that nice teal look. So I like where it's at there. If I wanted to add a little bit more, ooh, that's getting a little too much for me. Maybe like right there. I've already got this image sharpened and we've got a little bit of grain on it. And I definitely love the grain here on this image, especially when you've got gradients like this where a lot of times you can get some banding happening, usually right here. That noise is gonna really help cover that up. Fantastic image, Alex A. Streeter. Good job, dude. Moving on here, I really like this image sent in by underscore Renphoto underscore. One of my presets here is the portrait preset and already you've got much deeper, darker shadows but still keeping the skin tones nice just that preset alone like this is already fantastic i like where the white balance is at sometimes i'll just mess with the white balance to see if it if it does need anything and i think i probably like it a little cooler maybe right about there on 4751 and let's go and take a look and see what a gradient filter wants to do here let's add one like this I want to bump some of these highlights get this light a little bit brighter here warm it up a bit i think i like it where it's at there Let's get a crop on this, four by five it. Yeah, I already like the way this is coming along. I really kind of like when you bump those highlights a little bit, it really makes the model glow a lot more. Do we need to bump the shadows a tiny bit? I think I like where they're at. We'll bump them a tiny bit. Give this image a little bit of clarity. I like where the vibrance is, but let's see if there's any more. I actually don't mind like a little bit more vibrance. Again, constantly toggling back just to make sure I'm I'm not just doing some crazy editing stuff that's just totally ruining the image. I like the tone curve, I like where the blacks are. We're gonna take a look at the HSL here. Take a look at my yellows. Just wanna make sure those skin tones are exactly, and those reds are. I like the reds going over just a little bit there. Really helps even up the skin tones. Let's take a look at the luminance. Brighten them up just a bit. And this is where it's tricky. If you over edit this, you can kind of go down this nasty rabbit trail. Let's take a look. Is there any greens happening here? Not a ton of green. Aqua, definitely some blues. So again, I'm just bouncing back and forth between hue and luminance, seeing where the colors are lying in the image, jumping over to hue and seeing if I want to mess with them. I like these blues a little bit more, almost on the purple side. 
Don't love them too aqua. Maybe right there. That's my saturation with the blues. Give this a little bit more, but now I don't like where they're at with the hue. There we go. There's quite a bit of purple in this image. And we're gonna push that over to blue. I also want to take the purple and desaturate it just a little bit. I'm constantly working with what colors do I wanna focus on? Typically maybe one or two, possibly three colors. And then all the other colors, I'm typically gonna desaturate them and not really use them as much. You can see a recurring theme is that contrast between warm and cool tones. So that's just a huge part of my aesthetic is that warm, cool tone balance. These magentas, you can see, look at all that there. Now, if we bump it all the way down, you're gonna lose some of the skin tone there. So we still want some of it, but then I'm probably gonna go over to hue and maybe get those over all the way to the red side of things. Okay, I like what uh, the color grading here is doing. We've got a little blue in the shadows. Yeah, that's, that's working some wonders. A little warmth in the highlights, which is helping our skin tones sharpened. And there's actually no grain on this, and I actually like that. The other thing I'm gonna do is zoom in on her eyes here. You can already see there's some detail there. Let's go ahead and take the adjustment brush. We're gonna feather this down a little bit, and let's see if we can make her eyes pop just a little bit. So I'm just gonna paint right in her eye area. There and there. And let's go ahead and bump the exposure a little bit. I'm gonna bump that clarity. Highlights a little bit. saturation and make them a little bit more blue just bringing out a little bit more detail in her eyes there you got to be careful with this though because if you do that too much it's just gonna look like a vampire I would say this is pretty close to done as an artist you never really feel like you're done with a painting or a project and that's how I feel a lot of times when I'm editing photos it's always it's just like yeah it's to a point where I feel like it's close or close enough that you'd want to share it with people All right, this next photo is sent in by at MXT the WMCK. I think I'm pronouncing that right. But this is a pretty sweet shot of Moraine Lake. Let's take a look and see what preset's gonna work good for this one. Got the cinematic one, which actually, wow, that looks fantastic already. Let's try this vintage one. That vintage one looks really sick too. Ooh, this lake mood one, wow. And that one actually did adjust my exposure. Let's bring that back up. This is a very recent preset that I've created that also has a gradient filter on it. You're losing quite a bit of color. A lot of the blue in the lake is almost gone, but let's see if we can bring some of that back and still keep some of this mood here. Let's bring some of that blue back. Looks like this one's actually also doing some lens correction, which I'm actually not mad about. We'll keep that. So let's go back up here. I think I like the exposure. Where it's at? Highlights. Shadows. White balance is solid. Low clarity. We've got some vibrance happening here. Let's pump that up a little bit. Oof, that's, that's a tasty treat. I like that. Let's bring this gradient mask down a little bit more. I don't need it that dark. Let's drop these highlights down a little bit. I wanna warm that up. Ooh, I actually like that. Man, that's looking sweet. Let's take a look at the crop. It's four by five. This We want that model centered in the image. And here's where it gets a little bit tricky because if we one by one this, I still want to be able to see that mountain in the square as well as the model. Maybe we'll go a little bit further up here. That's not bad. The other thing is we might need to straighten this out a little bit. So I'm gonna use that horizon line on the lake to straighten it just barely. I think right there is the perfect crop. You guys can see I'm just messing with sliders and stuff. Slapping on the preset, adding gradient filters if I need to, adjustment brushes. Maybe we can add a gradient filter here and enhance some of this lake area. We can bring some clarity up. A little bit more bump in the shadows. Do we want to warm it up? Ooh, I'll take that. I don't mind that at all. What's that before look like? Wow, that before is really clean. Let's take off some of the grain here. I also feel like we gotta open up this crop just a little bit. Maybe right there. Oof, I think I like it without the grain. We'll bump up the shadows overall just a tiny bit. You know, I don't do a whole lot with the tone curve. A lot of what I'm already doing here with the highlights and shadows and exposure is getting me where I need to go with it. But if I need to make any additional adjustments, I will. Let's take a look at the HSL. See where my yellows are sitting. They're sitting great. There's this red on her flannel. I think that's pretty good. We want to desaturate that a little bit. 
What about the colors of the water here? I have any greens and a bunch. I'm sure we got plenty of aqua here. Oh, that's uh, all that water. Oof. Just that like nice aqua, creamy aqua blue. That's fantastic. And then keeping these blues a little bit more in the aqua side. I think I want to add another gradient filter here and see if I can bump these shadows just a tiny bit. All clarity. Yeah, there we go. And let's see what kind of color we're at. We're not adding any color to the highlights. And we're adding just a tiny bit of blue. What if we added a little warmth? shadows. I think I might like that a little better. Or do we like the blue? I actually think I like the blue. Just a little bit of it though. Do we need to add any color to the highlights? Ooh, that's not bad. Just a little kiss of warmth here up on the mountains. I would say that's done. I think with epic shots like this in places like Moraine Lake, if you over edit something that already just looks fantastic, you're just like taking away from the natural beauty. I know I've got a personal aesthetic that can kind of bend what might look real. For this, this is fantastic. Well, I had four additional images, but I think I'm gonna stop this video here and I'm gonna do those next four images on a part two of this series. So each photo and Instagram account that I featured already, they're linked in the description. Please go check them out, give them a follow. They're all very talented. So I hope you're inspired by this. Thank you for watching. Be on the lookout for part two of this series. There's plenty of stuff in the description linked below. If you need music for your videos, we're here, moodsounddesign.com. Check that out. Also, if you did learn something from this video, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when we upload. Give a tap on that like button for me as well. Let me know in the comments what photo was your favorite. I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.